Hi, I'm Cheryl Dorchinsky, founder of Atlanta Israel Coalition, executive director of Americans United with Israel. And I'm here with Lauren Isaac from Peru, Canada. Hi, Lauren. How you doing? I'm worried. I'm worried sick. Tell me what's going on over there. You're in Israel right now. Right. I'm in Jerusalem. And let me tell you, the situation is not good. It's not good in Israel and it's not good outside of Israel. But uh, right now, since Monday, we've had Hamas terrorists launching rockets at Israel indiscriminately and continuously. And there have been close to 2000 rockets launched already at our civilian population. And uh, Jewish uh, Israelis have died. Israelis have died this week and a lot are in hospital. There's huge property damage. It's serious. We've got a terrorist organization on our border um, trying to destroy us, trying to wipe us out. Yes, I could speak to outside Israel, but inside Israel, um, is it true that people can't trust their neighbors right now, that there's a feeling of tension all around? A hundred percent. It's actually very scary to walk down the street in certain cities, in certain areas. And uh, though I wouldn't be anywhere else, I still maintain that Israel is the safest country for Jews in the world. However, this war seems a bit different. In the past wars, it has definitely been a distinctive Hamas versus the Israeli population, you know, a terrorist government entity in Gaza trying to destroy the Jews and Israelis in Israel. Now, during this war, there is a lot of um, tension and violence from within, from within the communities. Palestinians, Arab, Muslims are rising up from the cities in Israel. No affiliation with Hamas, but they are rising up and attacking Jews in the streets. They are burning shuls, the synagogues. They are throwing rocks at cars. They are attacking their neighbors, people that, people that they've lived with for years. It's quite frightening. And to be honest, a lot of residents of different cities like in Lod and in Jerusalem and different places, they are shocked. We are shocked that our Arab neighbors are just rising up to kill us essentially. So I've seen um, notices telling Jews all over the world to be careful of safety because there are announcements that we should be attacked. Um, and you mentioned that this has nothing to do with Hamas, but isn't it true that um, it's not really out of nowhere? They're inciting violence right now and they're encouraging this behavior. But these aren't just <laughs> random individuals deciding I'm going to attack people. Well, of course, Hamas is instigating the violence. They always do. I mean, Hamas is. It, you know, founding documents, their national charter calls for the death of all Jews, the destruction of Israel, to make the land Jew free, to use jihad as a violent struggle and to use martyrdom. Of course, Hamas's aim is to incite violence, is to make the, the Arab people rise up and kill the Jews and to take over Israel. Now, with that being said, the people in Lod who attacked their neighbors the other night and who lit the cars on fire, they're not affiliates of Hamas. Uh, they're not Hamas militants. They're simply Arabs living in half Arab, half Jewish cities, and they are rising up, whether they are taking their cue from Hamas or whether they're using the situation as it is as an excuse for violence, they are rising up regardless and attacking their neighbors and the Jews in the cities. So whichever way you want to look at it, there is violence from within and from without, and there's violence from the head down from the Hamas terrorists, but also from the bottom up, from simple civilians in towns, I mean, there's a TikTok trend, right? Where Arabs are just punching Jews in the face on the street randomly and putting it on TikTok. This has nothing to do with Hamas. This has everything to do with an ideological struggle that the Jews face every day in Israel and around the world. People uh, have these anti-Semitic tendencies and it's really showing through now that this war has started. So this has nothing to do with the land and the evictions. Ah, the evictions, the Sheikh Jarrah uh, property dispute. No, this has nothing to do with that. Uh, firstly, the Sheikh Jarrah uh, property dispute has been going on for years, for decades. It's been in the Israeli court system. So anyone saying that this precipitated the violence makes no sense. It's been disputed for years. It's only now gotten to the Supreme Court, but it's been going on for years and years and years. Uh, my friends, actually Jewish friends, live in Sheikh Jarrah and they've been dealing with it for so many years. So this is nothing new. Now, uh, this is what we call a pretext. They're using it to further the 
violence and they're saying, oh, we can justify the violence because now we've got something to point to. We've got the Palestinian evictions to point to. Uh, also, the, the Sheik Jarrah uh, situation is grossly exaggerated uh, considering the fact that there are hundreds of Arab Palestinians who live in the neighborhood who are fine. There's nothing to do with them. And there are four families being evicted from properties which they do not own because there are Jewish families with the title deed to the land and these Palestinian families refuse to pay rent. Um, so this is the kind of the crux of the issue of why they're being evicted. You know, if I did the same thing in Canada and I lived rent free on someone else's uh, property, I would also be evicted. But to suggest that that has precipitated the violence is uh, completely false. Not to mention the fact that even if that was the starter of the violence, is that justifiable? Is that justifiable in anyone's eyes? Someone being evicted from a home means you can go out and murder civilians. I don't see the connection. I don't see the moral justification. And I think in your eyes and my eyes and anyone who's civilized, uh, we say, even if that were true and, and what everyone's saying in the media is true, uh, it's no justification for the violence we're seeing. You're absolutely right. I agree with you there. Um, I see all these hashtags, you know, free Sheik Jarrah. And um, it's interesting to me because I really doubt that if, you know, I didn't pay my rent here in the United States and I was evicted, um, there would be these hashtags and, and rallies. Um, as you see in Israel, it seems like it's just an excuse to me. Um, I agree with you hundred percent. It's crazy. Yeah, of course, so and, 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 and when Hamas launches 2000 missiles, at civilian populations and people say, well, this would have never happened if, if the Israeli government had it evic hadn't evicted four Palestinian families. I mean, what, what planet are we living on? Since when is that an, a, a sound logic? Since when is that okay? Can you imagine if that happened in America or Canada or anywhere? The world would not tolerate it, but it is tolerated because the rockets are aimed at Jews. That means it's acceptable. Uh, of course, uh, no no amount of evictions warrants uh, murdering innocent civilians. However, this is what we're dealing with in the media and on the ground. Yeah, it's tragic and it makes no sense because if you look in the media, the headlines are incredibly deceiving and people just take a look and you know scroll on and they go, oh, Israel's at it again. And it's like, well, what is Israel at exactly? Israel is trying to protect herself and her citizens. Israel is doing the right thing. I mean, honestly, it amazes me that people can support terrorism. Um, do I support the murdering of innocent Palestinians? Absolutely not. But the other day, one of Hamas's own rockets killed children. It backfired, right? Was it a backfire, misfire, whatever oh, fire, it ended up there. Exactly. Hamas has, has misfired hundreds of rockets into Gazan territory right now. And they, yesterday they just knocked out the electrical power for Gaza, for all of Gaza, because they accidentally fired a rocket at their own power lines. And yet they blame Israel for it. And when they calculate their um, casualties, they include those who are actually doing the violence and terrorism. So everything is so misleading right now. It's hard to know you know, the truth from just these propaganda that they're pushing. Um, I hear all the time about, you know, well, why don't you comment on the Palestinian deaths? Why aren't you commenting on, on them? And it's not a zero sum situation. It's not, I want Palestinians to die. No, I don't want anyone to die, but I still have the true belief that Israel should be able to protect herself. And I support that hundred percent. Of course, and, and when they talk about the number of deaths in the media, it basically comes down to the age old argument of not enough Jews died to make us happy, not enough Jewish deaths to satisfy the media, right? When it says oh, 100 uh, Arabs have 100 Palestinians have died and only 20 Israelis have died, that's unacceptable. It would be acceptable if a thousand Jews had died, right? Is that enough for them? Or maybe it needs to be 2000 or 3000. I don't know how many Jewish deaths would satisfy the media, but we get to that ridiculous, uh, you know, soundless, uh, just incomprehensible argument of not enough Jews have died to make us happy. Yeah, it's it's insane. It really is. And you're right. I can't imagine anybody else tolerating it, any other country, anybody supporting it. And okay. it's really interesting to me that the rest of the things that go on in the world are very rarely mentioned as opposed to the hyper-focus on Israel. Have you noticed that? 
Exactly. In the whole history of the Arab-Israeli conflict, from its inception, there have been approximately 95,000 deaths. Uh, and that's compared to millions and millions of deaths. If you look in the, uh, you know, Iran-Iraq war, in the Syrian genocide, in all the things going on in, in North Africa, but no one cares. No one cares because they only care about a, a war that has to do with the Jews. Yeah, that's tragic. What can we do here to help you there? Uh, first of all, you got to keep spreading the correct information because there's so many pervasive lies and propaganda in social media and in the newspapers and, and all these things. You got to keep sharing the truth. You got to correct people when you see them lying and deliberately twisting the truth. Show them the pictures, show them the videos. We have proof, right? We have videos of Hamas launching rockets this week from heavily uh, civilian populated areas. We have a picture of them launching rockets from, from a, a location that was one block away from a kindergarten and a mosque. If that's not human shields, I don't know what is. We have to share the truth. So continue to do that and dispel the propaganda, especially online. And uh, also su support our community in any way you can. Send money to the IDF, send supplies to the IDF. They literally, they need it, right? We are in a war here and uh, prayers also count. As a religious Jew, I ask for your prayers for Israel because they are very powerful. But honestly, just keep spreading the, uh, the truth. That's most important. You definitely have uh, my prayers uh, nonstop. Um, you know, we're doing a, a, a campaign right now with Yatar. Are you familiar with them? Yes. So we're trying to help them get more equipment because volunteers out in the front line without, you know, the buggies and being able to like navigate. I mean, that's insane. But yeah, it really is. So that's, that's excellent. Thank you so much for for what you're doing because it really counts on the ground. It counts and it helps. And every supply, every dollar uh, that's given to the Israeli army, and every person that's able to help so that a soldier can go fight on the front, it, it really, really helps. Yeah. So I would encourage everybody to give. Um, we have uh, links on our Facebook pages. It's um, so important right now. As Lauren said, Israel definitely needs our help and we're here. Anything else I could do, you know where I am. So just- Exactly. <laughs> Thanks so and much I, for- hmm? Thank you so much. I just wanna thank you for all the amazing work you're doing for Israel and for the Jewish people around the world. Well, thank you. I mean, really, thank you. And um, it was a pleasure speaking with you. So thanks again for coming and talking about your experience firsthand over there. You as well. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Pray for peace.